Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Are you ready to create beautiful Christmas-esque motion graphics? Well, my goal is to make your vision easy to accomplish by showcasing all the Christmas techniques you need to know for this year. So if you're ready, let's bring the holidays to After Effects. All right, the primary objective of this tutorial is to showcase how to create full screen Christmas projects with any graphics that you may need. So let's start with the scene setup and unwrap the rest of this tutorial. See what I did there? <laughs> anyway, so no matter your vision, you should set up your background first and if needed, use the rectangle tool to create a white landscape if you're creating, say, an outdoor scene. Now, to populate our scene with beautiful graphics, we need vectors. So if you search for free Christmas vectors, you should be able to easily find a handful of great resources and just look for the type of graphics that you want for your video. And when you get those graphics, just open the .ai or .eps document in Adobe Illustrator. The only thing we need to do here is isolate graphics that we want to throw into After Effects. So you can hold Control or Command on your keyboard to select an object, but you may need to go to Object ungroup but when selected you can copy the graphic then create a new 1080 by 1080 document and then paste what you copied and then when you're ready save this graphic as an illustrator document now back in after effects you can import that saved graphic as footage and place it into your project what makes vector so unique is that when you click this cog icon you may scale it to infinity without losing quality Actually, your computer would blow up, so don't do that. But continue to populate your scene with graphics if that's what you need. Fortunately, on my end, I can time lapse my way to completing this first technique. And that's how you can add in any Christmas object. Next, let's talk about snow. There's two ways to create snow in After Effects. The fast way is by creating an adjustment layer and applying the CC snowfall effect from simulation. Then punch up the opacity and then adjust the background influence so that you can see the snow better. And boom, easy snow. It looks great, and I actually suggest combining it with the second method of creating snow, which we can create with any PNG or vector image of a snowflake. Just be sure to turn it off when it's inside your timeline, then create a solid layer and apply the CC particle world effect to it. And then you can easily become a math whiz by setting the particle type to a textured quad polygon. And when you're done being amazed, you can drop down the texture and set it to your snowflake. And perfect. I usually like to set the rotation parameters here both to zero so we can actually see the snowflake facing us. Then you can adjust the birth and depth size and then set the size variation and max opacity to 100%. But whatever you do, make sure you come to the opacity map and draw this in completely like so. If you need to change the color, you can also apply the generate fill effect and then you can set the color to say white. So next you can go into the producer and increase the radius X and then position the emitter to be above the composition as this will allow the snow to fall down. You should also lower the birth rate and increase the longevity and then move this layer forward in time. Now we'll have these really fast particles. So to adjust this, go to the physics and set the animation to my preferred style, twirl. And then we can lower the gravity and set the resistance to say one. Just be sure to give your graphics card a jacket to stay warm. And to help give you a warm shot at producing great work in no time this holiday season, we've created our first holiday builder pack, which allows you to preview and easily add in your own titles and graphics to build out your perfect holiday project. And you can get our free template pack and check out all 40,000 plus templates in the description below. All right, we have a handful of great remaining techniques to go over, and I still want to show how to create this fly through scene. But first, this is a great time to start animating your individual objects. You can keep it simple by keyframing the position, scale, and even the rotation of objects to animate into your scene. However, if you need animation that's somewhat more complex, try the puppet pin tool to add points onto an object. Then you can animate one of the points to move your graphic in the way that you need. But when you animate an object's rotation or scale, it's important to use the pan behind tool to move the anchor point of each layer so you can get the correct animation. But it's up to you to accomplish whatever you need for your project. If you need great text, my favorite Christmas fonts for this year are Merry Christmas Flake, Beauty, and hmm. Dynapuff. Interesting. I guess you gotta say it like that. But when you have your text ready, my favorite way to animate text is simply by going to the blur text presets here. 
and just have fun with these but evaporate is probably my favorite you may need to reveal the keyframes by hitting U on your keyboard with that layer selected and then rearrange them to get a Christmas-esque blur. So for a lot of projects, you might be good to go with all these techniques, but if you're feeling extra ambitious and want to create a fly-through scene with 3D depth, get ready to leave me some cookies. I mean, leave them for Santa. All you need to do is make your layers 3D, and then use, say, the ellipse tool to create a landscape blob like so. It can be completely abstract, don't worry about it. And then make sure that's a 3D layer and push it into Z space so that it's closer uh, to us. From here, you can add trees and other objects with the same Z position value as the new landscape. Also, I would change the color of this new depth so it stands out. And remember, you can use the fill effect to quickly change the color of objects. It's good practice to continue to build out your scene with multiple layers of depth. But when this is all done, you can go ahead and create a camera. And I would suggest using one of the wider presets like 24 millimeters and click OK. Then add keyframes for position and point of interest and then move forward in your timeline. And at the top here, you can use the dolly towards cursor tool to zoom into your scene. And that's how to create a fly through scene. Be sure to take your time. Merry Christmas and always be creating.